happy, carefree American kids, bound for school, eager to learn and eager to play, growing up as most of us did in a free country, far from the horrors of war. Here they are at their lessons, learning the skills of hand and head, each child doing what most interests him, and doing it under skilled direction. Caring for animals teaches them kindness and responsibility. These youngsters know no prejudice of race. Here they soberly look over the earth we live on, naming the lands torn and ravished by the catastrophe of the greatest war in history. Europe, Holland, laid waste by the Nazi invaders, women and children, their homes destroyed, waiting to go they know not where. Boys whose parents are dead or lost, children and parents lingering amidst the ruins of what was once so short a time ago, home. And in the wake of the invader, death and destruction everywhere, with only occasional scraps of food, sleeping wherever they fall from exhaustion, they slowly starve and quickly sicken. Bombed out even from ruined homes, they take to the road to go anywhere, away. Starved and ill, their frail little bodies distorted, many are rescued from death and sent off to lands far from the horrors of war. Here we see American children, hearing of their rescue and learning their need, put up packages to be sent by mail and express to many lands to give them comforts, food, clothing, toys, and with them, sympathy and friendship. The National War Fund collects the money for the purchases from all over the country, from those fortunate in America to be free from the tragedy of invasion. The Polish war relief adds its efforts, for many of the children and families are from Poland, the land first overrun by the Nazis, first to feel the terror of the conqueror who enslaved the whole population. Only a few escape, and it is those lucky few who now write from their havens of refuge their gratitude to their American friends from Iran, Egypt, Palestine, Scotland, Kenya, and Pretoria in Africa, wherever kindly friends took them in. Victor Carter? Oh, boy, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Miss Grace oh. Young? Yeah. Miss yeah. Elizabeth yeah. Ming? Oh, look, I got yeah. Master Bruce Martin? Stephen O'Neill? Where's the Oh, boy, look, look at that. Look at that. Oh, Victor. Oh, Victor. Victor. Will you read your letter? Dear unknown friends, I am a Boy Scout and I come from the booth. When I was home, I saw many beautiful rugs from Persia, but I never thought that I would ever go there myself and even sleep in a tent. We were tired and hungry when we came to Persia. There we got food and clothing. We had no bathrooms in the tents, but it was fun to bathe one's feet in the cool mountain brook. Our school was in the woods. There we learned to read and write in Polish so that we would not forget that Poland is our native land. Now we are in Palestine, or the Holy Land. Here we also live in tents, and we swim in the Mediterranean Sea. Once when I was on a beach, I saw a Polish soldier kissing his child, whom he had just found. We are all happy here. We exercise and play games. One day we also visited Jerusalem where we saw many ancient churches, mosques, and synagogues. Never before did I see such strangely dressed people and such narrow and crooked street. During one vacation we visited Egypt where we rode on camels. As we passed the Sphinx we made faces at him but he was not offended because he is very old and wise. I am 12 years old and the pyramids are 4,000 88 years older than I. <laughs> Where are those pyramids and the Sphinx? Right about here, in Egypt. Will you read yours now, Patricia? Just a minute. Dear friend, thank you for the warm clothing. I am washing it now. It is very cold here at night, 
but during the day we wear hats that are called tropical helmets. There are big mountains here, much bigger than at home in Zakopane. We live in a camp. For a long time we slept out of doors and we were very sad. At last we have a house again. Mr. and Mrs. Valenti and their daughter are making our roof with very long leaves. I don't know the name of these leaves. Could you ask your teacher how they are called? There are nice fat hogs in our camp. We shall have real Polish sausages for Easter. I wish we could send some to my friends in Poland because they have nothing to eat. One time, a man with a camera came to our camp. He took some pictures of our field kitchen just as we were getting our lunch. There was a great deal of commotion because we all wanted to be in the picture. It was all very exciting. Mr. Lipa was a conductor on a train in Poland. Here he makes shoes so we won't have to go barefoot to school. In school we learn Polish and English. We also learn many interesting things about your country. The boys play football. Janek Goleski is the best football player. It is not his fault that his name is so hard to say. We girls play games. We form circles and sing songs. It is fun even though we do not run around and make as much noise as the boys do. One girl who also wanted to kick the ball hurt a foot and had to go to the hospital. In Poland where the war started, there were many children in hospitals, but they were hurt by German bombs. Where does this letter come from? The stamp is Nairobi, Kenya, which is British East Africa. Dear Americans, I am not a soldier, but I wear a soldier's cap. Thank you for the hat. I gave it to Sally Gold, whose mother and father were killed in the ghetto by the Germans. She comes from Warsaw. She is washing clothes with the other girls. She says that she will open a Chinese laundry when she goes to America. The boys like to mend shoes and tinker with drinking cups and other dishes. Mr. Michael Kevich was a real printer in Krakow, and now he prints a newspaper in which there are all kinds of stories about wars for the grown-ups. We have good food here. Yannick does nothing but eat all day. We all like to eat, but he most of all. Our teachers told us that there is no food in Poland now. Thank you for the chocolate from America. It is very good. There are big birds here that lay eggs as big as my head. They are called ostriches. There is also a dog and a cat here, just like in Poland. Are you with your mother and father? I have not seen my mother and father for such a long time. I miss them very much. This letter came from Pretoria, South Africa. And now, George, won't you read the one you got from Scotland? All right. I am completing my education, which the war interrupted so abruptly. In school, many of the boys wear uniforms, and some of them have already fought the Germans in France and Norway. They even smoke cigarettes. Some of the boys are excellent chess players. I don't play chess myself, and I'm not very good at mathematics. But I like other sciences, of which physics is my favorite. Almost all the younger boys have joined the scouts, and they hold many outings together with the Scottish scouts. You all feel at home here, and I in particular, since my parents are here with me. Just recently, my brother was born in the Paderewski Memorial Hospital. He cries a great deal now, just like the other Polish babies born in Scotland. But I do not doubt that he and they will find a lot to smile at. And now the children hear of a letter which could not reach them. A letter from Poland. 
from children who did not escape and who, unlike those they have helped, wait for deliverance from the conqueror and a chance again to live in peace. They hear again of the scenes in devastated Poland, of homeless families hoping against hope, praying for the end of war, of the dead in the fields, of the innocent victims, of the wan faces of children, homeless and hungry and hopeless, those children who were not saved and who were beyond help. But they might read amidst the stories of horrors another message of hope for justice between nations, of a world organized to prevent wars, of freedom from fear and want, when children can grow up to live their lives out to the full in a peaceful world of plenty and brotherhood.